Yo, what is up guys? And welcome to another Wild Rift video. Today, banger. Banger, okay? I'm gonna summarize to you what today's video has. First of all, new Fiora build, which is unbelievably good, okay? It incorporates the Madame Mune, you'll see. Secondly, Fiora got a buff. She takes turrets way faster now. Third of all, I got your favorite Fiora player on the board, Black Mercy. Fourth of all, you're also gonna see me play Fiora. Oh my god! Everything! We have everything in today's video. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to show you my Fiora and to watch Black Mercy's Fiora. The gameplay that he sent to me, I have not seen yet. Oh man, we'll see. We'll see. So, sit tight, grab your popcorn, grab your whatever, your pizza, sit back and enjoy the video. So first of all, let's talk about the build real quick. Divine Sunderer. I always see Black Mercy go Divine Sunder, even against a squishy composition. I'm gonna assume that's to be more tanky and have more sustain, because this heals you up. However, from me, I recommend you to go Trinity Force into squishies. However, 80% of the games, I actually, actually 90% of the games, I've gone Divine Sunder myself. Only if the enemy is like full, full squishy, I go for Trinity Force. Reason being that Divine Sunder works, generally works the best. Even if the enemy is kind of squishy, the enemy Baron Laner is probably not that squishy. And you're like 80% of the times in the game, you're gonna be up in a 1v1 against that Baron Laner. So can you imagine? The enemy Baron Laner is a Mundo, but everyone else is squishy. You know, common math would tell you to go for Trinity Force, right? Because sure, Mundo is tanky, but everyone else is squishy. No. In that case, you also go Divine Sunderer. Because very likely you're going to be split pushing a lot, and you're going to be against that Mundo every single time. So having a Divine Sunderer allows you to quite easily win that 1v1. After that, you get Tear of Goddess. And then the little bit of a secret sauce in the build is the Ionian Boots of Lucidity, guys. Fiora is one of the only champions I built Ionian Boots of Lucidity on, and I've seen Black Mercy do it as well. This basically lets you use your first ability every second. I'm not even kidding, it's like literally every second. After that, finish off your Mana Mune. Then you get a Sterex Gauge, guys. Sterex Gauge is such a powerful item. Are you into heavy AD? You can then also get a Death Stance. However, I recommend you to go for tank after the Sterex Gauge. You know, whether it be an Amaron Twin Guard, Guardian Angel, even a Spirit Visage if you're against heavy AP. Because remember, Fiora heals up a lot and Divine Sunderer heals you up a lot as well. Basically, you can go for tankier items after that, right? Like, you can go for tankier items. Also, also, if you're against a healing Baron Laner, which is quite common, you know, like a Mundo, like a... Like a Vladimir, like a... Or if you're just up against a Soraka enemy, basically if you're against a lot of healing, you can, in the early game, you could get the uh, the Executioner's Calling, or a Darius even, because if a Darius hits his first ability, he'll heal up. Executioner's Calling very early on in the game can really help you win lane against those healing types of opponents. So yeah, this is how you build the new Fiora. Oh, for the enchantment, I don't know what Black Mercy goes, but I pretty much always go Protobelt. Sometimes I get Teleport if I really need to, you know, split push and teleport to my team. Um, stasis, I don't really recommend. You have your second ability. It's essentially a Stasis on cooldown. Um, um, so yeah, I go Protobelt because you can proc your, um, you can proc your vitals with the Protobelt. Now for the runes, you go for Grasp of the Undying. You go for the Precision Tree. I like to go Brutal, Black Mercy likes to go Gathering Storm. We have a different playstyle, like I play a little bit more aggressively early game and I rotate a little bit more. Black Mercy actually split pushes still like 15 minutes into the game and then he 1v9s. It's a different kind of playstyle, both work, his playstyle is more risky and it involves um, you having to 1v9 the game. Like my playstyle is rotating to your team, helping them a little bit, you know, you're not gonna be as ahead because you're not split pushing all the time, but you're gonna help your team secure more objectives. So for me, it's a little bit more team reliant, helping your team. For him, it's 1v9. So if you want a 1v9, you go for Gathering Storm. If you want to be a little bit more team reliant, win your lane a little bit more easily, then you go for Brutal. Third one, you go for uh, 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 Last Stand. You get to a low amount of HP, you ult the enemy with the Last Stand, you'll do insane damage. Huge, huge extra damage. 11% is a lot. And then here, Legend Alacrity, honestly, each one of these is viable. Tenacity is viable, even Bloodline is viable. It's whatever you want, to be fair. Like, all of these are viable. And then last one, you go for Demolish to take turrets. My favorite is Transcendence, however, to have even more cooldown reduction. But Demolish is, of course, really good as well, which allows you to demolish turrets. And for the spells, you go for Ignite and Flash. So that is it about the build. Let's now get into the first gameplay. This is not my gameplay, this is Black Mercy, guys. 
Oh, I have to pick winners for the skin giveaway, by the way. Let me see if the volume is good, by the way, guys. Just give me a second. I'm just checking the volume. I know the screen is probably glitching for you guys, but I'm just checking the volume. So, you know, the whole video is going to be fine. Um, so for the skin giveaway, I'm going to be picking, I have to pick winners. I'm being a little bit lazy right now. I will pick, I will pick the winners either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Okay, the volume is good. And what month is now? September. Is it already September? Really? Yeah, I'm doing another skin giveaway this month. I'm giving away three skins this month. Not four, but three. <laughs> All you have to do to enter is put on a comment under the video. Um, so... A big shout out to Black Mercy, by the way. I play with this guy a lot. He's a very nice guy. Uh, you know, I kept asking him to send me a Fiora gameplay. He was eager to send one as well. He sent it. So let's see. Let's see how he plays. Because very often when I play with Black Mercy, it's like, you know, this is the thing with him. Like earlier on in the game, he never really helps. He just always kind of, he's AFK farming. Sometimes I get a little bit mad when he does that. Oh, nice one. But then I, you know, when we reach that 15 minute mark, he just goes into a... Like a full build enemy and absolutely 1v9s. And then I'm like, okay, this is why he was farming. So let's actually see it from his perspective. How does he do that? Because honestly, I've tried it as well. Some games it worked. But like a lot of games, it's just so hard to, you know what I mean? Like go 1v5, find the right target, ult the right target, kill them fast and fi keep fighting. Like that's what he does. It feels so hard sometimes. But let's see how he does it. And then let's look at my own gameplay as well. So he's kind of bullying this Atrox. Here he made a mistake. This is a common mistake a lot of people make. Wait, I need to, I want to show you guys. This right here is a very common mistake where you lunge within turret range. Sure, he hits him, but even if he procs the vital, it's not worth it yet. Only if you're a little bit later on in the game, it's worth to bully the enemy with vitals under the turret, because the turret shot won't do that much damage. But here he actually gave up an, a very strong advantage he had in his lane by trying to bully him like that. He didn't bully him, he bullied himself. So actually, that was quite a substantial mistake. I, I do want to say, it. it may seem subtle, but I really have to say that was actually quite a big mistake. Of course, he blocks that with his second ability here. He can actually fight him. He can jump over. Yeah, there you go. Um... He can even flash. Oh, there we go. He did it. Yep. You see, you can flash combo your first ability. He flashed it on the vital, ignited him. And of course, he's going to win that when you flash combo it like that. Very, very nice. Very clean. Just a very nice little combo. You have to be able to do these types of combos. Like, as you can see, I was not really surprised that he did it. I would have done the exact same. Um, it may seem very hard to do. And to a newer Fiora player, or like more of an inexperienced Fiora player, of course it's hard. But you need to practice it. And the way I've gotten pretty good at flash combos, of course not as good as Black Mercy, is by doing it in practice mode. Hop into practice mode and just do flash combos on, um, on, uh, on dummies. Do it on dummies and you'll be good. You know, you'll be good. You'll be fine. Your flash combos are going to get a lot better with that. He went for anti-heal, by the way, early game, as I explained during the build part. Because he's against an Atrox. So like the Atrox won't be able to win a 1v1. Because if you don't go anti-heal, Atrox can actually out-heal out your damage. Stun him? Ooh. Not a bad Atrox, by the way. Clearly, the enemy Atrox is not a bad player. He's sidestepping those uh, Ripos very, very well. Black Mercy needs to be careful. Is he really going to try to dive the turret again? He. Ooh, that was, see, that was a better one. Second ability? Ult. Ult. Where's your ult? He actually got an email. <laughs> oh, they're gonna kill him. He, okay, so right here, just so you know, he didn't have to ult. Um, I'm being a little bit nitpicky. He could have just procced the vital right here and then ult. It would have done much more damage like that. But it seems like he didn't care. The reason that he actually ulted probably is to instantly get the movement speed. Because you need to remember, when Fiora ults, she does get movement speed. So I think that's his explanation to why he didn't proc the vital and then ult. He knew that he just wanted movement speed and instantly kill the Atrox rather than being efficient about this damage. He shouldn't be afraid of this. Um, oh, now he should because Fizz is coming as well. They both need to run away. Yep. Very nice. As you can see, he's running out of mana. This is why you go for mana mune, by the way. If you want to spam your first ability as a Fiora, you really need to go for mana mune. Um, you'll need it. 
and the cooldown reduction that it gives you as well. It's you'll see. Like right now, the cooldown of his first ability is like four seconds. If he misses, if he hits it, it's, it's like three seconds. You'll see. You'll see the fun. Like yeah, it's it's actually two and a half seconds right now. When he gets his items, it's gonna be one second, even less. I believe it's like zero point eight seconds even. He could freeze this lane, but I think he's gonna shove it. Because he's very close to a Divine Sunderer. Uh, he just has to push a little bit more and he'll get a Divine Sunderer. Oh! Flash combo! Ooh, nice. Nice. Shove another wave, I guess? Or is he gonna use the Demolish? Okay, he doesn't even bother shoving it. Because the objectives are spawning, he's gonna go back. See now... The question is, is he gonna go back to lane or is he gonna help his team? I really think he's gonna go back to his lane. Yep. He never rotates to dragons. He never. Like, he never does that. He always goes back to lane. I, I, like, I've played with him. I know that he was gonna do this. He goes back to lane and he's, he's probably just gonna push again and contest Harold. And contest Harold. <laughs> you can get a Divine Sunder as well, by the way. Yeah, he just gave away the health. It's fine. He's probably gonna go back after this just to get that Sunder because the Divine Sunder is such a massive power spike. Fiora is also very good into Lilia, by the way. There's no way Lilia can kill a Fiora because the one CC that Lilia has, Fiora can simply just block. Lilia is going back. He's probably gonna shove one more wave and then I think he's gonna go back. Actually, no, he's gonna keep pushing because look at Atrox. Atrox is rotating. This is what happens every game. So like the enemy Baron laner will rotate and then he just keeps pushing. That's what he always does. Literally always. He's gonna block it. Yep. Easy. Easy block. Very, very simple. Lilia can never Lilia can never beat a Fiora. There's no way. Keep pushing. What Draven is getting fed though, that's not oh that's not good. See, this is the risk you're taking with this playstyle. Obviously, the enemy Baron laner is rotating, so the enemies have an advantage, you know what I mean? So you're sacrificing your team for yourself. Is he gonna go at Yeah, so Tear of Goddess now? And then I think you're supposed to go Ionia Boots of Lucidity. At least that's what I do. Let's see what Black Mercy does. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying these types of videos, make sure you give it a like. It really, really supports the channel a lot when when you give these videos a like. He can't really ult him. He's not gonna kill him, yeah. He was too far. Him, however, he can, right? Ah, uh, wait, did he flash? How did he dash away so fast? Yeah, okay, he flashed. I see. No way. He gets that... So close. Man, Fizz does so much damage, by the way. That's ridiculous. Now the question is, is he gonna run away or is he gonna help the Oriana? He doesn't have ult, so he does have to be careful. Ooh! No way, he filled it. But he still kills him. Ooh, so clean! Ah, oh, he, he could have actually killed both of them. But that was, regardless, that was very clean. That was very nice played, nicely played. But he could have he could have done that a little bit better. He filled his second ability. If he hit that on... Like, he, he purposely walked into the Fizz ultimate to use his right post. But then he filled his right post. It's pretty funny. But this Draven is getting fed, though. That's not good. It's not a good sign. Lilia better stay the hell away from Fiora. Okay, he didn't stay away. I think he's in trouble. Second ability? He was... Yeah, he's fast though. That's the thing. He's fast. But when you finish that Mana Mune and Ioni Boots of Lucidity, Lilia cannot really outrun you anymore. You'll always be able... You'll always be able to use your first ability to keep chasing her. That's the beauty of this build. I forgot to talk about one item, by the way, which is Blade of the Noon King. This item is also good. Fast. Like, if you're against a very tanky opponent, Blade of the Doom King is very, very good. Because your first ability applies on hit effects as well. So if you're against a very tanky, uh, tanky as in HP tanky. So if they have a lot of health, like a Swain, a Vladimir, champions like that. You go for Blade of the Doom King on Fiora and you'll be a 1v1 queen. Very 
very nice. Look at how fast Fiora takes turrets now, though. With that change to her first ability. How the hell did Riot think that Fiora should get a buff? With pushing, even. She pushes turrets so... Wait, he didn't... Finish the Mana Mune, yeah. If you if you can buy a full Mana Mune, you can. Like, it's okay to finish it. So now he finished it. He's just gonna be dashing around the map all the time. You'll see, like, he'll, he'll randomly use his first ability as well. Even though he's walking somewhere, just to stack up his Tear of Goddess. He should not really mess too much with these two. Ah... Oof, Rengar came in clutch. He's actually be being with his team a surprising amount. Like, when I, when I play with him, he never rotates. I swear to god, like, until 15 minutes, he just literally never rotates. It's so funny. He's ulting Seraphine because she's an easy kill. Very, very nice. See, within all this chaos, he realized that Seraphine was the only free kill he would get. He ults the Seraphine, kills her fast, heals up from his ultimate, and then continues chasing those vitals. Look, he hit another vital right here. It's like very, very, very clean gameplay. This is very good gameplay. And a good Fiora player will truly see how good this gameplay really is. Like, you know, if, if, if a beginner Wild Rift player or someone that never really plays Fiora is watching this, They'll be like, sure, this is nice, whatever. But if a good Fiora player is watching this, they'll see how good this is. They will see like that this player truly knows what the hell he's doing on this champion. And this is only, you know, this is only early game. Is he really gonna go random and Omen? That doesn't really make much sense. I mean, I guess the Draven, I guess, but... Really? Random and Omen? No way. Iceborne? Is even... The fact that he's even considering that? He's going for Iceborne? I guess he's testing it out or something, because the items don't stack. <laughs> he's only gonna get the Icy Area. Perhaps he just wants the Icy Area to slow down the, um, the Lilia. Boom, boom, and boom. Very nice. I never recommend you to go for a double sheen item, by the way. Just that, That's just me. It seems like he's doing it. He's chasing him. Like, look at the cooldown that he has. With the Mana Mune. It's ridiculous. He's not enjoying the Muramana damage yet. But he is he is playing with the cooldown reduction though. He almost has a Muramana. He needs 180 more stacks. Look, he's chasing down that Seraphine. He's gonna ult her, probably, to get movement speed. Because you need to remember... That damage though. For your ult gives you movement speed when you activate it. Bro, the damage is ridiculous. He basically two-shot the Seraphine. Wow. The damage, man. It's ridiculous, actually. Like, picking off champions one by one with Fiora is so strong. And he has his ultimate again. He'll easily be able to 1v1 on Aatrox. Easily. Ult. There you go. Ah, oh, that was not a good one. But I think he's still gonna kill him. Wow. Atrox actually did a good job remaining close to the wall, so Fiora wouldn't be able to hit that vital to the, towards the wall, but it was not enough. Oh my god, they stole the Baron. <laughs> That's not good. Iceborne, he went for Iceborne. Ah, oh, she's dead. She's so dead. Like, it doesn't even matter what she does. She's literally dead. She's also- oh! She actually did almost kill him. That's the weakness of Fiora, by the way. If an enemy is smart, they can hide a vital on a wall. So you'll never be able to proc your ult. Or you... Like, if there's one vital on them, you'll never be able to proc it. Because they're right next to the wall. Which essentially halves your damage. It's it's pretty crazy. He went Iceborne Gauntlet. What the hell? Now we go Spirit Visage? I don't understand, man. Oh, against a Fizz and a Seraphine. Spirit Visage does make sense. If you do need magic resist, the one item you need to go is Spirit Visage. Boom, boom, and boom. Super fast ultimate right there. Proc the Vital, and that. Wow. Just clean. See, now, just look at the cooldown of his first ability. It's it's under one second. It's literally zero... It's... How much? 0 0.9 seconds. Second ability? Nice. He's not gonna die now. 
Because he used a beautiful second ability. Flash? There we go, baby. I, like, I see all of this coming because I've played a lot of Fiora myself as well. But I'm appreciating the beauty of this gameplay. This is great Fiora gameplay right here. See, now he reached the game. Now he reached the moment of the game where he actually rotates a little bit more and starts to 1v9 the game. But his team is doing a pretty good job themselves already. So it seems like he doesn't really have to too much. He goes QSS this game. Mm, QSS? I suppose against the Seraphine. Seraphine should probably be his... The only CC that's problematic is probably Seraphine. He's not gonna ult him, he doesn't need to. He can go top lane, try to apply pressure top lane here. As a Fiora, you pretty much always want to be by yourself. Also, hole breaker, I don't recommend. The item just kind of sucks right now. Don't you shouldn't really build it anymore. Like hole breaker is just not good. You can't end, bro. What are you doing? Go back, <laughs> kill the fizz. Okay. Wow. That was big. What's that, Tara? Bye. My, my, Khalili. Hey, Marina. What the hell happened? I looked away for one second. Wait. Seraphine got caught, and you're telling me she got a triple kill? Okay. Oh, Seraphine just killed this whole backline. Oh, and then Seraphine also got the kill on Fiora with like a red buff or something Damn, hey, the game is turning. The tables are turning now This Orianna is a really good player as well by the way. He's like I know him. He's a one-trick Orianna He's a very good Orianna player. I think he's the best Orianna player I've seen in EU in solo queue at least a very very good this this guy is a very good oriana player teleport okay he he went teleport but it's a little bit late for your teleport yeah i hate that update they did to enchantments by the way i don't know about you guys but i hate it so much the fact that you cannot just buy a teleport quickly anymore so dumb in my opinion in my opinion it's super dumb like literally one of the dumbest changes they did to the game what is he doing He's pushing bots so they don't have to deal with bot lane. And then he's just gonna clean up probably. Okay, now he's gonna help. See, these are the moments where he wipes the entire team. Let's see. Boom, boom. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I got this, he got this. He's just gonna keep chasing him. QSS, nice. Yeah, he's gonna keep chasing him. Ult and chase. He can win this. He can win this. He's gonna bait him. Look, look, look. He's gonna bait him. Oh, man. That was sick. I knew he would do that, but he was still sick. Can he end? Three seconds? I don't think he can end, actually. Yep. A little bit of a weird surfing ultimate, but hey. I have, I have my own gameplay ready here as well, by the way, after this one. My gameplay is very interesting. It's a very, very interesting one. I'll explain to you guys why after this game. Yeah. He's, he's, he's probably looking for a free kill right here on a Seraphine. Yeah, he's gonna kill her. He's gonna kill her. 100% he's gonna kill her. It's a weird Rypost. But he's gonna kill her regardless. I mean, look at that. No chance. And now, like, now he just chases her down. This is this is what he always does late game. He just chases down enemies like that. And he just kills them. He picks them up one by one. Look at that. The cooldown of the first ability allows him to do that. Proc the vital. Oh my god. He just wins. Let's take a look at how much damage he did. And everything like that. Before we move to my gameplay. He's the MVP of course. 47 and a half thousand damage. Damn. So I'm gonna move to my gameplay now. And this is on to the second gameplay guys. 
This one is mine, and this one is interesting for a different reason. This one, this particular gameplay, it's not like I did some amazing moves or anything like that. It's it's more that um, I remember this game, I was split pushing a lot. And I feel like split pushing was the way to go for us to possibly win the game. Now, I'm not going to say whether or not we won the game, but like, you'll see, you'll see. I played this game a really long while ago, but that's the one thing I remember, remember about this game. Wait, I need to turn up the volume a little bit. Turn this down. All right. Let's see, I'm leaning against the Gragas. Leaning against the Gragas is not that hard as a Fiora. All you need to do is just not get bullied by his first ability. You can use your right post to dodge it. And when he gets too close, you poke the vital, of course. And always trade with him with your grasp of the Undying as well. And, see, moves like that is very nice too, where you just randomly jump on them right after the engage. Because, like, they're running away, and then you just very quickly hit another first ability on them. Even if you don't proc Grasp, even if you don't proc a Vital, it's still gonna be worth it to do that. I'm kind of freezing this lane, as you can see. Because I want to make him lose farm, and I want to keep the pressure up. So, like, I want to keep my wave here, so he always feels pressured about, you know, where the hell's my jungler, uh, and stuff like that. The only problem is he's gonna be ahead in levels, because he took more minions than me. Flash combo? killed him see i flashed it on top of him i didn't even need to really hit the vital i just flashed on him used the grasp of the undying as well ignite third ability and i killed him it's like a very very quick kill and if he would have you know done any sort of damage to me i could have just riposted and i would have been fine so that was a very very nice and clean kill right there i went back got some items got my sheen uh, and now back to my lane, you know, I, I have an advantage right now You should pretty much always have an advantage as a Fiora Almost every matchup is easy when you play Fiora Unless you're against like a cannon or something, that can be a little bit annoying Look, I'm freezing the lane again Proc the vital Try to get as many minions as I can And now bully him with the grass of the Undying, you see? Especially now that I'm ahead, I can just bully him like that I did mess up the bullying a little bit here not gonna lie, but it's fine, it's okay. Oh, see, that's what you not want to do. You don't want to get hit by those first abilities. I could actually all in him here. I'm level 5, he's not. I could ult him. I blocked it, boom, boom, and boom, easy. You see, if I hadn't blocked his third ability with my right post, he would have killed me. But it was kind of mind games. I just knew he was going to do that. If he didn't do it, I would have just disengaged. But I really, really believed that he would do it. So I ulted him, riposted, just walked. I literally just walked around him and I killed him. Not like I did some crazy combo. I just walked around him and I killed him. As you can see, I don't have... I don't have uh, Demolish. Because I like to play with Transcendence. I prefer to have even more cooldown reduction. Yeah, I'm gonna go back now, because I have no mana at all. Of course, early game you're gonna struggle with mana, because Fiora is very, very mana hungry. This, they have a lot of magic damage. I think this game, I will... They have. They really have a lot of magic damage. I think this game, I may go for Mercury Threats and the Spirit Visage. Now, I don't remember. I really don't remember this game too much. The only thing I remember about this game is, again, the split pushing. Gragas is in mid lane. I don't care, I'm just pinging them, I'm gonna push. See, this is what Fiora needs to do. As a Fiora, you don't you don't rotate here. Even if your team loses the fight, you don't. What you do is you push. Like, look, I'm just this is what I need to do. I just need to push. All I need to do right now. Look, someone is either forced to engage on me. Oh! Okay, that's not a bad Diana player. Why do you guys okay? Why do you guys... Why would I say that's not a di bad Diana player? You know why? Because he did a very quick ultimate right there. A very quick... He knew I would have right posted it otherwise. So, here I already assessed that the enemy Diana is probably a very good player. I already knew... Like, I already kind of assessed that to, uh, to him. Just from that little play that he did right there, his game knowledge and, and how he plays is clearly very good. So, you know, I knew that I had to be a little bit careful of the enemy Diana in this game. This Gragas is not, not as good, but the Diana, you know, I already knew she may become problematic this game. Look, I'm just keeping the wave there, I'm just bullying him. Look at that. Look at that, man. It's literally almost dead. 
I, I, I did lose a few minions for that, but that's totally worth it. Because now he has to backboard, or he has to stay under turret while being very low HP. Either way, it's totally worth it for me. Like a passive Fiora play would have just would have just farmed their wave there, which is not the right play. Me, I pushed hardcore. I got him down to 10% health, he was forced to take the honey fruit, and now he's like with his back against the wall. You know what I mean? And look, I'm gonna keep pushing. Literally, he's gonna keep pushing. Now, I could, could have gone into the bush and ulted him, but I realized I'm probably not gonna kill him with that. I wanted to ripost, but then I realized I didn't actually even hit him, and I still have minions under the turret, so I don't even have to ripost that one. So I ended up not doing it, because I was fine anyways. Don't know why the hell they're FFing. We're oh, our oh, I remember our bot lane was so bad. Oh my god, I remember. They were FFing all the time. They were dying all the time. Oh my god. That gives me PTSD to this bot lane. Oh man. And look, like, oh, I remember. Oh, they were so bad. Oh, they were so bad. They were just FFing all game long. I really need to go back. Actually, if he hits that ultimate, I can kill him. If he hits that ult, hit it. And ult. I don't I don't have mana, but we still killed him. Okay. Yeah, I, I stay. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm dead. Even Corky is here. I'm trying to hit vitals. I actually, actually kind of nearly killed the Diana. But a 1v3 situation, I'm never gonna win. Yet. Not yet. So I went for Tear of Goddess, and I think, like, now that I'm looking at this game, I'm really supposed to go Mercury Threats now, not Ionian Boots this game. Mercury Threats are way too broken to not go. She can't defend this, unfortunately. There's no way Katarina can, can actually even do anything in this lane. I want to remind you guys again, by the way, since I've uploaded two games today, to give the video a like. It really, really, really supports the channel a lot. And also, if you want to see what I do in my personal life, make sure to follow my Instagram. Like, I actually post almost daily stories. Like, by daily something like that. Ooh. Flash? I didn't flash. Ah, now I flashed. Okay. I should have flashed a little bit earlier. Then I would have had a chance to kill the Corky. But yes, if you want to see my, you know, what I do in my life and stuff like that, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Uh, all the links to my social media are in, are in the description. You can join my Discord, follow me on Twitter, even though I'm not really posting much on Twitter, but if you want to, you can, I guess. Huh? Eh, what's that? But an Ibo could have been better, I guess. An Ibo and Beto could have been better, I guess. But love not. Alright. Let's see. I didn't miss anything, so we're fine. So as you can see, I'm clearly I rotate a little bit more than Black Mercy. Even though this game I did a lot of split pushing. This is not my this is not my usual playstyle. I do rotate a lot more than this game. But as a Fiora, you really shouldn't. Like, you really should cater more towards the split pushing playstyle rather than the helping your team playstyle. So that's that's just how Fiora works. You need to be careful with um, hitting the turret with your first ability, by the way, if the enemy is, is close. Because it can also do AoE damage to the enemy and then the turret is of course gonna focus you. I'm probably dead here, yeah. It flashed on me. Yeah, I was a bit too far right here. Corky rotated it to me, I was a bit too far, I should not have done that. Hopefully, at least my Caitlyn can get a turret in return for the Corky rotating to my lane. Let's see. Yeah, here I was like, okay, so I don't care about the objective top side. I am split pushing. That's what I decided here. I am just split. I don't care. I'm not gonna do my usual mistake on Fiora where I want to help my team. I don't care. I'm, I'm just gonna keep taking turrets. Like I really don't care what the hell happens on that side. I'm just gonna, you know, whether I take one turret, two turrets, their entire blue jungle. I'm just gonna do what I want to do. Take a look. 
So I'm split pushing right here, you can see. They're fighting, I don't care. I don't care about the fight at all. You see, I just keep pushing. I am of course paying attention whether or not they're rotating to me. I pushed. And now we're backing off. Do need to be careful of any rotations. I could all in the Gragas potentially if he gets a little bit too close. Let's see. He's not getting too far so I'm not gonna all in him. And remember I keep dashing around on the map just to stack my tier of goddess. Because it's of course important to get the Muramana as fast as you can. Again, split push, you see? We have turret bounties as well. Well, they have turret bounties because they're, they're kind of ahead of us. So that makes split pushing even better. He has a control ward in that bush. I saw it as well, but didn't really bother popping it yet. I just wanted to take this cut of crap. Nice. Now I can all in him. He's way too far from his turret. I blocked it. Oh, I, that was beautiful. Beautiful flash combo right there. I flash comboed the last vitals to hit it and I killed him with that. That was really nice. And then again, I did my job. We're back to split pushing. You see? I'm not gonna overcommit to it. I'm going right back to split pushing. I'm gonna shove one more wave. And then I'm probably gonna go back. I'm actually not gonna go back because three of them are in mid lane and two of them are dead. Which means I can take the turret for free. You see? Three of them are mid. Two of them are dead. Gragas for seven more seconds. Easy turret. You see? Easy turret with a bounty. I can even shove another wave, I can even take their jungle if I really want to, and then I can go back. That's what, like, when you play like this, you're really gonna get ahead of the game. That was actually a misclick on my right post, but it's fine. Am I even gonna go for that jungle? No, I'm not. But I'm, I am taking his, uh, his uh, ward. I did see the Ash Arrow, but to be fair, I didn't want to overcommit, because I didn't know where the hell the enemies were. So I didn't wanna... And I also didn't really trust the Ash to hit it. Oh, I tested out something here. I didn't finish my Mana Mune. I had so much gold that I straight up went for Starrix Gage. And I'm still stacking up the Tear of Goddess. I actually think that is the right choice here. I am unbelievably strong right now. Because I have a Starrix Gage. If I went for Mana Mune, I would have been a little bit... I would have been a lot weaker than what I am right now. But now I have a whole ass Starrix Gage ready. So what am I doing? Split pushing. Not the bot lane. Be a little bit careful. Ult, ult! I got him. That's a kill. Oh, he's gonna ult me maybe? Ah, easy kill. Like, Sterex Gage makes me so much stronger right now. If I had a Mana Mune, I'm not sure if I would have won that fight. I would have done significantly less damage. Take the turret and keep pushing, baby. Look, all of them are on the Baron. I keep pushing. I don't care. I keep pushing. I'm doing Fiora things. Like, they, they are having constant pressure, this enemy, of me pushing. Like, I got, I'm, I'm getting two turrets, and I killed Yasuo. It's not like my team is in a 4 versus 5 situation. I literally killed Yasuo before I went pushing. And look, now Gragas has to come for me. I'm taking jungle. I can get a Mana Mune at home as well. I'm not bothering going back yet. I'm just keep, I'm taking their jungle. Because I don't have 700 stacks anyways. It's not like I'm getting a huge, huge power spike from the, man, from the Muramana yet. So I'm just, I'm pushing. You see, I'm still pushing. Keeping the pressure up. I can even take their red buff if I want to. Look, they can't see me. So I do have to be a little bit careful. I'm trying to take it as fast as I can. He tried to steal it, but I'm going right back out. Again, still pushing. Look, it's so funny. I am backporting, but if he does get too close. Yep, you see if he does get too close. Okay, he's not getting close. What am I doing? Pushing, baby! <laughs> now I can go back, get my mana mune, and only use my abilities a few more times. I'll have the Muramana, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be able to absolutely 1v9 this game. Now, what the hell kind of item next? Spirit Visage. Yes! I completely agree with me. Let's go. I went for Spirit Visage. Nice. This is game knowledge right here. And now I'm joining the fight. Look at my damage. Flash combo it. There we go, baby. Now I can just pick them up one by one. I blocked the, the I blocked the Diana ult, killed the Di killed the Diana as well, proking the vitals on the Corky too. I mean, just look at how much damage and sustain I have. Did we just win the game, by the way? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did we win the game? They're gonna have no. We're not, we didn't win the game. They have base shield, so we didn't win the game. Yeah, but I can't take the turret. 
But are you seeing, like, now I've reached that late game power spike that everyone wants with Fiora. Now I've reached it. And I'm going for Spirit Visage next because they're heavy AP. I can take their jungle as well here if I really want to, but it seems like I just want to rush the dragon. Ah, I wanted to rush this dragon ASAP because the enemies already have two dragons. Giving them a third dragon gives them potential to make a comeback. Not, not only potential, that makes them a favorite to win this game. Because then they'll have three dragons, which is really strong. I got a spirit physician. I'm going to be unkillable now. Like, 80% of the enemy's damage is magic damage. So, I'm essentially unkillable now. So, I can basically split push, win every 1v1, even every 1v2. Pretty much every 1v3 as well, I think. And I'll be fine. Like, I can just keep split pushing. We even have a Baron, so I, I can easily win fights right now. As long as I just properly use my ultimate, hit my combos, and not mess up. Be easily able to win. I got my Muramana. I'm just hella strong right now. No one even dares to get close to me right now. Anyone that gets close, I'll just kill. Someone needs to push top, by the way. One of my teammates should be pushing top. See, all of them are rotating to me. Because they know what the hell I am right now. They know what they're dealing with. I'm not sure why they're rotating to me. I want to be alone. Like, I don't want my team here. I want to be alone. I really don't want them here. Oh... Right post? Oh, I filled the right post, but it's fine. Like, again, I really don't want my team here. This is not how I want to fight this. We are winning the fight, but I kind of wanted to do it alone. I actually still think it would have been better if they went mid lane. If they applied pressure mid lane and I went... He died, nice. Sterex Gage saved my ass, by the way. Flash! Oh! Ooh, baby! That was a sick kill on the die. Oh, no, 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 no! The Nexus killed him. I hate how the turrets and Nexus, even though there is a minion within the range, if you step up within the range, basically at the same time as the minion, it always hits you. I don't know why the mechanics work like that. But it's fine. We won the game. Let's take a look at how much damage I did and everything like that. Let's see. Twenty-four thousand damage. Pretty good. I actually tanked the most damage as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you all in the next Wall Rift video. Bye-bye.